dead meme. All right, SevTech tutorial series part four. So uh, just to keep in mind, uh, we're starting age one. I expect you to at least have watched the previous videos or understand how to get here. Because if I go through every single recipe to do two or three of these, it's going to take like 40 minutes. So I'm going to assume that by now you've watched the videos or you've at least know how to operate JEI to the point where you can competently follow along. So when you uh, complete this, these two, which was where we left off, we didn't cover assembling this device because the video was already 20 minutes long. We'll do that very shortly. This will, it'll give you this achievement and then we'll begin this block. So I'm going to quickly show you the bare minimum requirements in order to uh, begin this setup. All right, so this is a friend of mine's setup, uh, the actual potato. He has the bare minimum setup. He went with the porcelain and this isn't a judgment or anything. The major difference between the two is the color and the materials used in its construction. So on the bottom, you'll put the heater, you'll put the melter on top, you'll need to make some sort of faucet and a basin in which to extract the metal from. So you would right click on this if there were metal in it and it would deposit the ingots or it would melt the, the ores down into a big block for you. So if we're gonna go upstairs. I'm gonna show you my rig so it's a little bit more automated. All right, so my setup is very similar. Seared heater on the bottom, melter on the top, the spigot, but I've done some little channel work here. So I'll let this start melting away. I'll explain what I've got set up here. So this requires fuel to burn. I have a whole bunch of different fuel sources being pumped in to provide heat to the melter. This is what's currently being burned. This is what's in there. So. This is a very time consuming process. There's a reason why I'm using hoppers, especially with the copper, it takes forever to melt. So perfect timing. So I'm using these channels. And if you look at the arrows, I'll eventually get it right. They'll be pointing that way. So that means liquid will flow in that direction. So the upside to this is I can have a partial cask of uh, copper and the tin won't get involved it will stay out. So that's how we're that's how we would set this machine up, but we are going to show you where these metals come from and those particular achievements as well. So one advancement that's available really early is the stirring pot, very powerful tool. So if you remember my leatherworking guide, how awful it was to make leather, you put one salt in with three of the raw hides and then you just stir it. Oh, I'm gonna have to do it this way. There we go. And as you can see, this method is significantly better for mass producing a great deal of leather. And that is my automated water setup. We can talk about that a bit later. It, it'll probably be one of the conclusions or the rig portions of the video. So as we progress, you'll get the, uh, advancement to create a crafting table uh, if you can't figure this out i don't know why you're even playing this mod pack the prospecting rod so the weak dowsing rod will just show a jei one more time you hit r on it you'll make this i'll show you how to use this a good way to find uh, materials and whatnot and that's where we're getting the ores in which to feed this device a very similar or closely located achievement is the anvil this is a very simple one to make. As you can see, there you go. When you make the anvil, it will give you a stone mallet. They're very easy to make. It's a stick and a, and a smooth stone. I like to do this, create a little workstation for it so that I can do something similar to what I was doing regarding the, um, the wood chop block in like the very, very first tutorial, but we're going to move on now. All right, so when you craft the dowsing rod, you're going to get a book that explains the, the prospecting mod to you. Uh, we're just gonna cover it, it's not very hard. So as I probably told you in a previous video, if you find a, a stone that does this, do not break it because in the future, it's going to be an indicator of where some metals are. So I have not discovered this metal yet, but I'm gonna show you one that I have. 
All right, so this is what I'm talking about. The rocks, once you reach the uh, advancement level that requires you to discover the metal or understand that it exists, all those stones that don't break immediately turn into samples. So the book will tell you what all these samples mean. Like this is tin, so I've marked it down as a tin mine. So the thing is, though, if you pick these up, uh, you, you only get a little bit of tin. It's, it's underground. It's in an enormous block. I'm going to show you a, an easy method to find it. Some people feel this is cheesy, but we're going to use the chunk system here. I'm going to take the dowsing rod. And I'm just going to right click and aim straight down. And I'm going to try and find where the tin roughly is. So it's some of it's here. So as long as I stay within this chunk where I find the sample, right? That's how I know where it's going to be. So now I'm just going to kind of start tunneling down and creating something similar to a stairwell. But I'm going to show you the finished product. Product. I don't think you want to watch me tunnel like this, so I'll be back. All right, so using the chunk loader system, you push F9 to activate it a couple of times till you get this grid. Stay within the chunks so you find the sample in. Take your dowsing rod, start going down. So that's when I knew, oh, I had to turn around because I, I couldn't find a sample, unlike here. So I started moving back and I can see the sample. Oh, I got too far away. So then I started tunneling back and there it is. So making like a stairwell, just kind of tunneling my way down. And this is what the ore looks like. It spawns in in an enormous uh, patch. It's not like vanilla Minecraft. So you're not going to like find random little ores dispersed throughout the world, at least in the overworld. I haven't done that much mining in Twilight Forest and all that, so the rules might be different there, but that's a different discussion. This is how you're going to find this metal. One tip as well, I believe it's called a brush scythe. You could use this to clear out large portions of the uh, terrain and whatnot, of all the shrubs, so it's easier to find the rocks, right? Because so, like that rock is smaller than the grass, but if you do this, it's easier to spot. You get a whole bunch of plant fiber too. You can throw it in your smelter for fuel if you want. But that's just a, a little tip. Hopefully you'll hopefully it's good for you. Alright, so now that I've got some copper that's coming in behind it, I'm just going to do that. So that it doesn't end up filling the other. Because I want to keep this available for tin all the time. And this one available for copper. But that's just a little tip I wanted to toss in there. Alright, so that would cover prospecting you'll use this method to find your ores basically when you go mine a tea light or a casserite you'll get the achievement for this one or the advancement coppers malachite and azurite there's coal that you can find very it's all done the same way coal's not usually as deep uh, at this stage you can make a hoe uh, if you've played any vanilla minecraft i think you can handle that we're going to not cover it uh the channels I would like to show you them. They have a couple of methods of construction. I like to use these ones. You can do a porcelain version. Uh, porc I don't like getting porcelain, so that's why I just haven't dealt with it. But I'm going to move on to the next step. Okay, so the next logical conclusion is you got your tin and your copper. You're going to make bronze. You're going to need to make a special kiln. This is him. Uh, it's done with kiln blocks. We'll quickly JEI those up. So this is how you would make them. You get two each. These are, you just throw some clay into your little kiln. And you will get the clay bricks. And sandstone is made with the vanilla recipe. Just like make a little sand block in the, in the crafting window. It is very easy to do. Uh, we're, we're not going to cover that. But I'm going to show you how to build it, how to put it together. For this next part, you're going to need the engineer's hammer. It's basically some copper, some string, and some sticks. Um, let's just call it up. Very simple to make. And those kiln blocks, so you're going to need eight of them. It's a two by two by two. So what that means, it's two on the bottom, two deep and too tall. So you've got this weird looking block. Uh, it's not doing anything. So you take your engineer's hammer, you right click on it, and it'll turn it into the alloy furnace. Alloy furnace 
requires you to have some copper and tin. I'll quickly, uh, actually, I'll just show you a lovely little method on how to get a whole bunch of copper real quick. So when you spill your copper out of your machine or your tin, you get a big block. I like to set this up and I just hammer away and the machine refills itself. I put it away and it's good to go. So this machine, the uh, I'm not exactly sure what the ratio is. I can't remember, but it is like usually twice as much copper as it is tin. And you just throw some fuel in this thing. It'll consume it up and it'll build you some uh, bronze ingots. And then bronze ingots can be turned into bronze sheets. And those sheets are needed to make the pickaxe, the sword, and so on. So I think we've covered the, the kiln and how to use it. We're going to move on. All right, so the blood altar. This is an issue for a lot of people. The documents that come with the book for the mod, uh, I don't feel they do a great job explaining. It is very lengthy, so I'm just going to cover how to build it, and I think that's where we're going to end it. The next video, I'm going to show you how to actually upgrade it and how to get all the stuff out of it you're going to need in order to hit the next set of achievements. So I'm going to quickly move into that. All right, so using this equipment, you'll be able to make the bronze ingots, the furnace, but this is the guy. This is the one that's weird. In order to get this demonic will, you're going to need to make a, snow, a soul snare. So you're going to need to make tin, you're going to need some string, and you're going to need some ashes. If you want some ashes, you can just burn a log on this grill. And you'll get, uh, when you craft this, I believe you get four of them. Yeah, so I recommend make, maybe making uh, three or four groups. So the way this machine, or not machine, this the way this item works is you'll put it in your item bar, and you will throw it at hostile monsters, and they'll get a, a white particle effect on them. And when you kill that enemy, that will cause him to drop a, a soul essence. So look, let alter up again. And that will allow you to finish making this. So um, that will give you the opportunity to place this down. These blocks, you need this to make it. And this upgrades it so you can advance through the system. Uh, give your altar a little bit of room, especially if you're really in, if you get really into blood magic, it takes a fair bit of space. So I've kind of planned for the future here. Like there's a, a altar that will take a similar shape and it comes out to about here. So it's just kind of like a little bit of a plan for a future. But what's up there right now is the bare minimum to advance th uh, through the game and hit the next set of achievements. So I think I'm going to stop there. My tutorial videos are really long i'm going to show you one of the useful rigs that we've built so that you can easily uh, automate another process all right so i'm going to show you the setup for this rig i've kind of prepared it to be refilled so that i can show you the methods so i'm just going to finish making a little bit of dough in here there you go so as you see the water level is decreasing and so i had this bucket we made this a long time ago but it's running out of water so We'll take our fluid bladder and we'll just fill it back up. So a water source is going to be required, obviously. We've used some tools uh, called aqueducts in order to run water here to make a source block. Because at this stage, you cannot move water. You can kind of make it run somewhere using aqueducts. So now with the spigot or the faucet from the uh, Tinker's Construct mod or the Porcelain mod will be fine. Those channels I showed you, you can just place them down. I'll show you one. So you'll configure it. See the arrows are all going this way. You'll stand right at the edge and right click and that will prepare the hole. And there you go. So this thing is going to slowly refill. Of course, it's going to drain the water. But, you know, it's a small price to pay. This is significantly more efficient than the other method of creating leather or dough that's available to us. This is another good thing to do. Put all of your stuff related to the station here. 
so that your friends or anyone that or you don't end up filling your inventory with a whole bunch of random nonsense. So I just want to quickly show you the uh, blocks that we use to get this here because that's the final part of this. These are the aqueduct blocks. So as you see, if I pick it up, the, the source block starts running out. So you just kind of make a little line. So the water sits on top of it. You put it on top. And there you go. It will slowly give you an infinite water source. So you can pipe water from a... I have a lake over there. I moved it down here because I want to have the nice oh, flat territory in which to work on to build this station. Uh, we may make this larger. We may put the mill here. That's a different uh, story, though. But hopefully you guys found that helpful, and we'll see you again real soon.